In this video, we will learn how to graph square root functions uh, such as this one with the number out front and such as this one with the number that's on the inside. But first, we need to start with the basics and see how we graph the simple square root of x function. And I will come back and answer these questions after we do the graph. Now, the nice thing about graphing a square root function is that you can use the same values for every problem. Um, we are going to start off with the values that you can take the square root of um, without getting a decimal. 0, 1, 4, and 9. If we had a bigger graph, we would put 16 on there. Um, now, so we are graphing the square root of x. So the y values will be 0, 1, 2, and 3. So we will use these same four values at, at the beginning of every square root function that we do. Notice that we are not using any negative numbers. Like we couldn't have put uh, negative 1 on the chart uh, because then we'd have to deal with the square root of negative 1 which is imaginary and we can't graph that on this real number plane. Um, so we will only have these positive values and zero. Uh, but we're, we're really finished. We can just go ahead and graph these points now. So uh, we have 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, and 9, 3 is off the charts. Uh, I'm going to estimate 7, 8, 9, 3 would be about here. Um, so, knowing that we don't have any uh, negative x values, this is the starting point. Uh, the, this curve is only going to go in one direction. And so it's going to look like that. So that is your classic square root of x function. This is the parent function for all of the other functions we're going to look at today. <laughs> now, let's talk about um, the starting point which is right here at the origin. So the starting point is 0, 0. Um, this function is increasing. Uh, maybe I'll just circle this. All right, This stands for increasing or decreasing. From left to right, this function is always rising, going up, up, up. So that is increasing. Now the domain. The domain is the x values um, contained by a function. So I'm um, looking at the x-axis. Hold on, that's a little too big for my purposes. Looking at the x-axis, um, <coughs> this function goes from here and to the right forever. So that's the domain that I just sort of colored in. Um, it's starting from 0, and it's going to positive infinity x values. Um, <coughs> we're going to put a bracket to show that 0 is included. 0 is on the graph and uh, infinity always gets the parentheses. Um, let's switch over to y values for the range. Um, so looking at the y-axis, this graph starts here and it goes up forever. All right, so this illustrates the range from 0 to infinity again. So in this case, the domain and range are the same thing. Okay, now end behavior. Um, as x approaches infinity, okay, meaning as we go to the right on this graph, um, what happens to the y values? Um, well, the function approaches infinity. So as we go to the right, um, we go to the right forever, and the graph goes up forever. So that, that's what this means, right forever and up forever. Um, now, something different happens as we go to the left. Normally, we say as x approaches negative infinity, because as we go to the left, the graph normally uh, goes to the left forever. But does this graph go to the left forever? No, it does not. So we cannot say as x approaches negative infinity, because x does not approach negative infinity. Um, this graph has a starting point. So we have to say as x approaches 0, Okay, because that's the, um, that's it. This graph doesn't go past zero as we go to the left. That's as far as it goes. So as x approaches zero, 
what happens to the y values? Well, as we go to the left, the y values are going down, <coughs> but uh, they don't go down forever. The y values are also approaching zero. All right, so that's it for problem number one. All right, now problem number two is very similar, except it's got this little negative sign under there. Um, you're going to hear me talk about A values and B values. So um, in general, if I have a number that's in front, the uh, coefficient out there, I'm going to refer to this number out here as the A value. Um, on the other hand, if I have a number in here in this position, all right, I'm going to refer to that as the B value. Okay, later we'll talk about H's and K's, um, but for now, a value and B value. So looking at this function, I want you to see this negative sign as a negative one. Okay, that is a B value. So in fact, I'm just gonna recopy this down here. So really I'm dealing with Y is equal to the square root of, and this is like having negative one X. <coughs> so what do we do when we have a B value? Now, I promised you that we would always start out with the same five values. And that was not a lie, so I'm going to do that. So I have my x's and my y's. So I'm going to start off with the same five values, or, or four values actually. 0, 1, 4, and 9. Okay, and the same four y values, because uh, um, right here I'm still just doing the square root of x and uh, that's just going to still be 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now when you have a b value other than 1 what um, what you're going to do uh, is you're going to make a new x column off to the side alright when you have a new b uh, a new b value you make a new x column and your new x column is going to be, um, now it's actually going to be the reciprocal of the b value times x. All right. <clears throat> when I say 1 over b, I mean the reciprocal of b. Now, in this case, um, the reciprocal of negative 1 is just negative 1. So the reciprocal of the b value is still negative 1. So it's going to wind up looking like I'm just multiplying the b value times x. But um, let's say if this had been a negative 3 instead of a negative 1, then right now I'd, I would have negative 1 third because this is the reciprocal. All right, but that's not what happened. So um, let me put things back the way they were. So I'm doing a negative 1. Okay, so I have negative 1x. So if I multiply all these by negative 1, I'm going to get 0, negative 1, negative 4, and negative 9. Now that I have my new x column, I will throw out my old x column, <coughs> and now I will graph these guys. Okay, so I'm going to have um, 0, comma 0, but then I will have negative 1, comma 1, so that's left 1, up 1, negative 4, comma 2, and negative 9, comma 3. And again, I'm going to have to estimate, so this is 7, 8, 9, 3 would be about here. So I can see this graph is starting here and it's curving to the left, so that's going to be like this. Okay, so notice that this is a reflection over the y-axis. So having a negative sign for a b value is going to give you a reflection over the y-axis um, because our previous problem is the same thing, but it goes to the right. And so now it's going to the left. That's a reflection. Okay, um, let's go and answer these little questions up here. Uh, the starting point is still 0 comma 0 okay now this time the function is decreasing so I'm gonna go ahead and just circle 
decreasing um, because from left to right the graph is going down the entire way so that's decreasing um, now the domain the domain is the x values so look at the x-axis this graph um, starts way over here at negative infinity and if I'm just gonna stay on the x-axis it goes from negative infinity until here it doesn't go past there <clears throat> so that's why the domain is going to be negative infinity to zero uh, and then with a bracket because zero is on the graph so there's my domain from left to right negative infinity to zero the order matters by the way guys you, you can't say zero to negative infinity it, it has to be left to right um, <clears throat> so the range uh, I'm going to do the range on the y-axis. The range is the y-values. And the y-values go from here up. So it's actually the same as it was on the last problem. So the range is going to be from 0 to positive infinity. All right, And it has to be in that order from least to greatest, bottom to top. Um, and behavior. Um, as we go to the left, all right, that's what we always do first. So as x approaches, now can I say negative infinity? Yes, because the graph does go to the left forever. So as x approaches negative infinity, um, what happens to the y values? They go up, 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 up. So f of x approaches positive infinity. <coughs> okay, so this part of the graph means as we go to the left, the graph goes up. Okay, now this part of the end behavior is all about what happens as we go to the right. Okay, what happens to the y values? <clears throat> so as we go to the right, so I'm going to say as x approaches, normally I would say positive infinity to indicate I'm going to the right. Um, but this graph doesn't go to the right forever, it stops at zero. So I have to say as x approaches 0, as we go to the right, but stopping at 0. So what happens to the y values? Um, the y values get closer and closer and closer to 0 as well. Okay, uh, I think that is it for problem number 2. Alright, next we're going to do problem number 5. We have a lot of interesting things going on. I'm skipping three and four uh, because those are cube root problems and I will do those on another video. Um, real quick before we get into number five, let's go ahead and talk about transformations in general when we are dealing with a square root type function. Um, so look, here's sort of a general form of the, your square root function. We can have an A value that's in the front and then we might have a b value that's right here. Um, now, as I mentioned briefly, sometimes we have an h value, which would go right here, minus h. And sometimes we will have a k value that will go here on the end. Each one of these um, has an effect on the graph as we compare with the parent function um, y equals x squared. So let's describe the transformations that are controlled by each one of these things. Now, technically, the a value can just be a negative number. So we, we can say the a value uh, might be negative 3, for example. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just stick a negative sign on here um, so that I can talk about what that would do to the graph if you saw it. And same thing here. Um, the, we, normally we just think of the b value as being a positive number or a negative number, but I'm just going to stick that in there so I can point to it with my diagram. Okay, um, so first of all, what the, uh, we just saw what the b, the b value does. Well, when it's negative anyway. So we just saw what happens when the b value is negative. And so what that turned out to be was a reflection over the y-axis. So that was a reflection over the y 
axis. <clears throat> That's what happened when we had a negative sign right there. Um, now, on the other hand, and I think I'll just do a variety of colors all over this thing. Um, if we have a negative sign right here, that's going to be a reflection over the x-axis. Okay. Now we're going to discover that the a value is going to control um, whether something is vertic vertically stretched or compressed. Okay, so I'm just going to say vertical stretch. Um, that's going to happen if, uh, if the A value <coughs> is bigger than 1. Ignoring the negative sign, this, considering that to be separate. Um, if A is greater than 1, that's going to be a vertical stretch or it will be a vertical compression or shrink um, and that'll be if the A value is less than 1. Okay, on the other hand uh, this B value is going to control horizontal stretches and compressions. So let me just get in there on that Okay, the B value is going to be a horizontal stretch. Um, that's going to happen if the B value is actually less than 1. So it's kind of the opposite of what you would think. It'll be a stretch if it's less than 1. Um, it'll be a compression if it's uh, greater than one. Okay, so that B value is all about horizontal stretches and compressions. And finally, the H value and the K value. Um, these are translations, all right? Just um, uh, if we have an H value, that's going to be a horizontal trans translation. It will send you uh, to the left um, if this number is positive. And it will send you to the right if negative. Okay, and that just leaves the K value. Um, the K value is going to move the graph up or down. So the K value will move you up if positive, and it will move you down if negative. Okay, so that's a nice little summary of what all these things will do uh, on the equation. Now, taking a look at number five, um, I see this negative sign that's in the front. That's going to be a reflection over the x-axis. All right, I see this four, like ignoring the neg negative sign. Um, that's going to be a vertical stretch. Whoops. Um, this 2, positive 2, is actually going to move us to the left by 2. It's kind of the opposite of what you would think. So we, we should expect the graph to move left 2. And this negative 3 is going to move us down 3. So watch for all those things to happen as we do this graph. Now I feel like I'm going to recopy this real quick. So I don't have to keep scrolling. So I've got negative 4 square root of x plus 2 and then minus 3. All right. So, like I said before, we can always start off with the same four values every time. So this will be no exception. 
So we will start off with 0, 1, 4, and 9. And the square root of those will be 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now, when you have an a value, and so we have an a value of negative 4, that is when you are going to make a new y column. All right, so on the previous problem, I showed you if we have a, a b value, we make a new x column. If you have an a value, you make a new y column. And the new y column is going to be um, the a value times the y value. So um, we're just going to be doing negative 4y right here. So I'm going to just multiply all these by negative 4. So that's going to be 0 and negative 4 and negative 8 and negative 12. This will be my new y column. So I can just forget about my old y values now that I have a new y column. Now we will save these uh, transformations until the end. Um, this uh, left two, down three business, we will do that later. Okay, so um, for now I'm just going to go ahead and plot these points. So I have 0 comma 0, I have 1 comma negative 4, all right, I have 4 comma negative 8. All right, so that's already taking me off the graph a little bit. So that's, <clears throat> I'm not going to be able to do the 9 comma negative 12. It's too far away. So I will make do with these. Okay, <clears throat> now, um, that is the graph of sort of the parent function without any, uh, without the left 2 down 3 that I need to do now. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take these three points and I'm going to move them uh, left 2 and down 3. So I'm going to go left, left 2 and down 3 because of these things. So if I go left 2 and down 3, I'm going to be here. Okay, if I go left 2 and down 3, I'll be here. Um, this is going to send me even further off my graph, um, which bothers me. So left 2 and down would be 3 would be about here. But um, I feel like next time I need different graph paper. Okay, so this was the starting point, and so it's going this way. So this will be my new starting point and my graph is going this way. Alright, and it's going right through problem number seven, but oh well. So that is what my graph should look like for uh, problem number five. Okay, so the starting point uh, is here at negative two comma negative three. Alright, that's my starting point. So my starting point is negative 2, negative 3. Is it increasing or decreasing? Well, from left to right, this graph is going down. So that is decreasing. OK, the domain. The domain is the x values of the graph. So this graph starts here at negative 2, and it goes to the right. So if I'm going to trace the sort of the shadow of this on the x-axis, it starts here and it goes to the right. So that's from negative 2 to positive infinity. That's the domain. Okay, and I will put negative 2 in a bracket to show that negative 2 is included on the graph. Negative 2 is part of the function. Um, and now the range. The range is the y values. So I will trace that onto the y-axis. So the sort of the shadow of this graph on the y-axis starts here, and then it goes down from there. It starts here and goes down. So that is from negative 3 to negative, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we have to do this from bottom to top. I almost did it backwards. I almost said uh, negative 3 to negative infinity. That would be wrong. You have to do the range from bottom 
to top. So I need to say negative infinity to negative 3 in that order. So the range will be from negative infinity to negative 3, again with a bracket. Now let's talk about end behavior. So this part of the graph talks about as we go to the left and then what happens to the y values. So as we go to the left, okay, so here I am traveling to the left. Um, first of all, it doesn't go left forever. Um, the x values are approaching negative 2. All right, that's as far to the left as it goes, is, is here at negative 2. So I'm going to say as x approaches negative 2, because that's what happens as we go to the left. Now what happens to the y values as I approach this point? Um, well, the last y value I reach is here at negative 3. So um, as I go to the left, approaching negative 2, the y values approach negative 3. Okay, now this part is talking about what happens as I go to the right. Um, now as I go to the right, the graph goes to the right forever. So I'm going to say as x approaches positive infinity. Now what happens to the y values? Um, so as I go to the right, this graph is falling, falling, falling. So the y values are approaching negative infinity. Okay, so that is it for number five. All right, next let's look at problem number six. Um, so look, let's go ahead and identify some of these transformations just for fun. We are expecting, uh, because of this negative sign uh, on the inside, this is a reflection over the y-axis. All right, reflection over the y-axis. Okay, um, now ignoring the negative sign, looking at the 2 that's sitting here. All right, that's going to be a horizontal something, but it's going to be the opposite of what you would probably think. Okay, because this is bigger than 1, this is actually going to be a horizontal compression or shrink. All right, if this had been one-third or one-half, then that would be a, a horizontal stretch. So everything in here is the opposite of what it sort of looks like. Uh, and then this plus one, um, this is going to be a left or right motion. Because it's positive, it's actually left one. Okay, and then the two on the outside, um, this is where your up-down motion occurs. And it's what you would normally think. Positive 2 will send us up by 2. So that's good practice for us. So now let's go ahead and do the graph. And as always, we are going to start with the same four values that we always have. Okay, we will start with 0, 1, four and nine and the square root of those will be zero one two and three we'll start with those now when you have a b value which is what this is the negative two then what you want to do is make a new x column that's what you do when you have a new b value you make a new x column Okay, now when you make your new x column, you multiply by the reciprocal of this b value. So I have a negative 2, so I'm going to multiply by negative 1 half uh, because that is the reciprocal. So I'm going to do negative 1 half times x. All right, so I'm going to multiply all these by 1 half. So I'm going to basically divide all these by 2. And they should all become negative. So um, this will still be 0, of course. Uh, anything times 0 is still 0. But um, a negative 1 half times 1 is negative 1 half. Or I could say negative 0.5. Um, negative 1 half times 4. Well, half of 4 is 2. So this will be negative 2. Um, negative 1 half times 9. Well, half of 9 
is 4.5. So this will be negative 4.5. So these are my new x values I'm going to use. So I can sort of throw these out and use the new ones. Again, I am not going to do anything with the plus 1 and the plus 2 yet. I will leave those transformations um, for the end. So if right now I'm just going to plot these, these points. So I've got 0, 0, all right, and then I've got a negative 0.5, comma, 1. So I'm going to go left half a square and up 1. So it would be right there. Then I've got negative 2, comma, 2. So left 2, up 2. And then negative 4.5, comma, 3. So negative 4 and a half, and then up 3. Okay, so this is my parent function um, just before I do these last transformations. And uh, remember, uh, because of the plus 1, I'm going to go left 1. And because of the uh, plus 2, I'm going to go up 2. Alright, so I'm going to go left 1 and up 2. So as I move each one of these points, so, so I have, I go left one, up two, that's going to be right here. If I go left one, up two, left one, up two, and left one, up two. Okay, so I will use these four points for my graph, this being my new starting point, so my new graph will look like this. All right, so that's what the graph is going to look like for this equation. <coughs> and now we are in a position to talk about the starting point. Uh, because I went left 1 and up 2, that means my new starting point is going to be negative 1, comma, 2. From left to right, this function is decreasing. Okay, it is falling from left to right. So from left to right, this is decreasing. The domain. Okay, as we know the domain, we are talking about the x values of the graph. So tracing sort of the shadow of this on the x-axis, it goes from way out here, and then it stops here. So that's from negative infinity uh, to negative 1 x values. So the domain is from negative infinity to negative 1. The range is the y values, so sort of imagine the shadow of this graph on the, against the y-axis. So um, this goes from 2 to infinity. All right, 2 is the lowest y value. So the range is going to be from 2 to infinity. Okay, and behavior. Of course, this is going to be talking about as we go to the left and what happens to the y values and this will be uh, as we go to the right what happens to the y values question mark um, so as we go to the left this graph goes to the left forever so I'm going to say negative infinity so what happens to the y values it goes up 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 so that's positive infinity now what about as I go to the right? This graph does not go to the right forever. It stops at negative 1, an x value of negative 1. So as x approaches negative 1. Um, what happens to the y values? Well, look at this endpoint. The y value is at 2. Okay, so the y values approach 2. All right, so that is it for problem number six. The last two problems will rely on our knowledge of these <coughs> transformations. So um, just keep this in mind as we look at problem number nine and ten. So write the equation of a radical function with the given transformations. So <coughs> we want it to be compressed vertically by um, one fourth. So um, vertical compression, all right, that's going to be controlled uh, by the a value. And it's going to be a compression if the a value is less than one. 
So if I want a vertical compression of one fourth, then I'm going to need um, an A value of one fourth. So I'm going to have a one fourth in front of the square root. Um, what else? Reflected over the y axis. So we're going to have a reflection over the y axis when you have a negative sign here, a negative B value. So I'm going to go ahead and put a negative right in there. What else? We want it to be left 4 and down 72. Well, left right motions happen in here. Uh, but it's the opposite of what you would normally think. So if I want left 4, I need to put plus 4. Okay, now notice that I had to put parentheses around. When you have a B value, you're going to have to put parentheses around the um, transformation. Uh, so finally, down 72, I will put just minus 72 on the end. And I will cap it all off with f of x equals. All right, let's do that one more time. We want a horizontal stretch by 7. All right, so a horizontal stretch. Um, let's look back at our situation. Okay, horizontal stretch is going to be controlled by the B value. Now, it's actually going to be a stretch if the number is less than 1. And uh, the word reciprocal should be somewhere in the back of your mind as we do this. Uh, okay, think reciprocal. Okay, um, because if I want a stretch of 7, then what I'm actually going to need is a B value of 1 7th. Okay, so I'm going to have a 1 7th um, as my B value. Now, I need it to be reflected over the X axis. All right, now it's going to be reflected over the X axis if there is a negative um, A value. All right, x-axis, this negative would be a reflection over the x-axis, so I'll need a negative way out here. Uh, I want it to be right 13, so left-right motions happen in here, but it's the opposite of what you would normally think. So I'm going to need a minus 13 to go right 13. Again, notice I'm, when you have a b value, you have to put this in parentheses um, to actually mean what you want it to mean and uh, up 42. So I'm going to put plus 42 outside of the parentheses. And I'll just put f of x in front of here. And you know what? I think I'll make this into an equal sign. Put the negative sign a little bit closer. I think that's it. Horizontally stretched by 7. That's what the 1 7th is doing. And then reflected over the x-axis, right 13, up 42. There you go.